Hey everyone, Eric here. Wanted to share a couple tools I put together to help film and TV composers keep track of music cues scored to picture. In particular, using spreadsheets, Google Sheets, or Excel, along with video time code in hours, minutes, seconds, and frames, where each segment of music starts and stops, uh, so that it handles all the tricky calculations involving different frame rates and drop frame standards for you. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, this is probably not the video for you, but for everyone who is still here, let's jump right in and I'll show you everything you need to get started. So the first tool is this spreadsheet template, which you can make a copy of, customize however you'd like, and use on your own projects. Now I'm showing the Google Sheets version here, but everything in Excel is almost identical. So for a quick first example, if I update the end time of this end credits queue, you'll see that the duration automatically recomputes. And then the second tool is that under the hood uh, is a set of custom functions that power all of these time code computations. They're behind this music log template, but you can also use them directly in whatever spreadsheets you would like. The code for the Google Sheets and Excel versions are both hosted on GitHub. See the video description below for links. And those pages have detailed instructions on how to get set up and how to use all the different functions, including a tutorial that walks you through all of them. So the first thing you'll want to do is go to File, Make a Copy. Note you have to be signed into a Google account to do this. This music log tracker is designed to be used day to day throughout a project so that everyone on the music team can stay on the same page about the current progress. There's also a cue sheet tab that gets used at the very end. We can go ahead and delete this big red instructions row. And like it says, immediately set the right time code frame rate for our project. I like to distinguish between 30.000 and 29.970. Since if an editor says 30 frames per second, they might just assume that's understood as shorthand for 29.97 but this is a detail you definitely don't want to get wrong. Also very important is whether the timecode standard is drop frame or non-drop. If I choose a combination that doesn't actually exist, like 24 drop, you'll see some error checking built in to turn things red. And then the error messages that explain the problem I keep in hidden columns off to the right side. So if we click this arrow, those will open up and we can see an explanation. I will hide these again and get us back to a valid choice. This template will also check errors if you enter a frame number that doesn't exist, or if you accidentally have a queue start before the previous one ends, uh, which is what this crossed arrows column checks for. Just for a quick preview of how this all works, let me open up those hidden columns off to the right again. You can see this duration in seconds column, which is where this figures out how long each queue is, and then sums all of those up together to get the total duration of music. Um, if we look at this third queue here, you can see it figured out a duration of 135.2 seconds. And if I open up the formula for that, the core calculation is using one of those timecode custom functions, wall seconds between timecodes, measuring the time in seconds from this start timecode to the end using the configured frame rate and drop standard. Uh, and then back over here in this main duration column, you can see my next favorite custom function, wall seconds to duration string, which converts from that 135.2 seconds into this much easier to read two minutes, 15 seconds. One important general rule throughout this music log is that if a cell has a gray background, you should not edit it, usually because there's some automatically computed formula. You can customize the rest of these columns as you'd like, but the other ones I have here are to keep track of which video file version the music was written for or last updated to conform to then the latest and greatest file name for each music cue that you've sent over to a director or editor, any miscellaneous notes, usage codes like main title or background instrumental that will affect how much in royalties each cue gets paid for. And then since a lot of things can move around after the original spotting session, these last columns let you keep track of the original cue number and start time to help keep straight which cue any spotting notes from the director should actually apply to. And finally, this nice colorful status column lets you keep track of how far along each piece of music is, and all these statuses are completely customizable. So let's jump over to the config tab now. Uh, these are designed to generally progress from top to bottom, 
though you might temporarily jump backward from, say, revisions needed back to writing in progress. You can configure as many or as few as you need. Uh, for example, you could also add a ready for notation status that would then be available to choose here in the tracker as well. I like to use status colors where yellow means I'm actively writing or revising. Blue means we are waiting for someone else, like a director, to approve a demo. Uh, red means the queue is back in our court and there's more action we need to take, like addressing feedback or conforming to a newly edited video version. And then finally, green once the final music is delivered. Let me back up again to the project tab. Hopefully this is mostly self-explanatory. The values you enter for production code, title, and the episode info, if it's a TV show, will also show up in other places in the spreadsheet, like the tracker tab and the EQ sheet. Uh, the writers and publishers table down here lets you assign the performing rights organization, like ASCAP or BMI, in just this one place, and then these will fill in automatically on the Q sheet every time. So let's jump over to see that. Here, if I choose XYZ Productions again for this second queue, the PRO automatically fills in. Because different queues can have different writers, you do need to explicitly choose the composers and publishers for each one and fill in their percentage ownership. Uh, there are a few other tricky details about how you should fill this cue sheet in and hand it off to your production company. So if you are planning to use this music log on a professional project, highly recommend checking out the follow-up music log in depth video. See description for a link. Last few things, the schedule tab lets you keep track of how much work is left based on how many days you have left to complete it. So first fill in a start date and a deadline for the project. Uh, then you can either list out all the specific working days, or you can delete this table to count every day until the deadline as if you're working seven days a week, which of course you are not since this music log helps you stay so nice and on top of everything. Then with your schedule laid out, you can see the amount of work remaining by each status in the progress tab. Uh, so this first group of columns shows the queues that are specifically in each status right now. So if it says there's one queue under revisions needed, that means there's exactly one queue with revisions needed selected back in the tracker tab. Uh, but this next set of cumulative columns looks at how many queues have made it at least this far along. Uh, so even though zero cues are directly listed as awaiting notes, there are two that have made it to later stages. So gradually as you make progress, you'll see each one of these percentage of music values ramp up to 100% once all the cues have made it past that stage. Finally, the help tab lists a few more tips and gotchas, along with links to this video and its follow-ups, and the GitHub project that hosts the under the hood custom functions code. For all my Excel friends, the Excel timecode project on GitHub has all the info you need to make sure your version of Excel is supported and to get these custom functions loaded. Fair warning, you will have to be pretty tech savvy and a bit more motivated since there are a lot more setup steps. You'll need to go through these once on every computer before you open the music log template or your own spreadsheets that use these timecode functions. But once you do have it set up, the music log template should look exactly the same. The only difference is that every function name has an extra prefix. So for example, instead of wall seconds between time codes, you have to write time code dot wall seconds between time codes. So as you might guess, I think spreadsheets are pretty great. Google Sheets, at least the consumer version, is usually free. Uh, you may already pay for Excel. They are powerful, customizable, and multiple collaborators can edit the same document at one time. But there are some downsides. If you're not careful, it's fairly easy to end up in a state where some formulas got corrupted and you're just not sure what's working and what isn't anymore. I think the most common case I see about that is a bad copy and paste. So train yourself to use paste values only so you're not copying formatting or formulas. Uh, in Google Sheets, you can do that with Control or Command Shift V. In Excel, sadly, it's a little bit more cumbersome. But I will show you how to do that, along with a handful of other gotchas in the music log in depth follow on video linked below. One more thing I'd like to stress is that I'm definitely not trying to create the one music log template to rule them all, for no other reason than that title probably already belongs to Shai Razov's excellent show queue manager spreadsheet, which I will also link in the description below. Definitely borrowed a few great tricks from that template, so I would encourage you to check it out as well and see what kind of tracking works best for you. There are also increasingly popular paid tools like QDB, uh, which are less customizable than your own spreadsheets, 
but can definitely save you from some issues like copy paste headaches that I mentioned earlier. For a few hundred bucks a year, that may be well worth it for you and your team. Okay, I think that was everything I wanted to go over today. Check out the music log in depth and timecode custom functions follow up videos if you'd like to go deeper into these tools. Shout out also to my friend and colleague Eduardo Delgado for suggesting a bunch of great improvements and for help getting all this working in Excel. I hope these tools are useful for you. Feedback and ideas to make them better are always welcome. All right, may your pictures truly be locked. Happy scoring. <laughs>